that the last time uh, we went to the supermarket to buy any veg was about two and a half years ago. Um, and we have just, we've adapted what we eat so that we don't need to uh, go to supermarkets. So we're not eating the same food uh, that we did previously. But the, the feeling of not having to go and select vegetables that aren't necessarily as fresh as uh, from garden to plate in 10 minutes uh, is a really nice feeling to be, to be independent of that system. When we bought this place, we didn't intend to be uh, homesteading or small holding or farmers or even the market gardeners. We just, we wanted a space that was ours, that had a bit of room around it, room to breathe and to feel less constricted than we did in our previous home. And I became ill and it became really obvious I wasn't going to be going back to the job I was doing before. So I undertook to grow and to raise as much of our own food as I could as, as my input into the family finances. So what started as a small idea became a, a really good plan on a piece of paper. And although some of those plans have come to fruition, uh, a lot of them have just then developed and grown and changed as we've got to know the, the land and uh, the way we work and the way we live in it. So it's been a really gentle, gradual process. And over the last three and a half years, uh, I've developed a, a half acre vegetable garden and food forest and now a market garden as well. So we've gone from putting in a few raspberry plants that we brought with us, and when I say few, it was quite a lot, up to having 24 raised beds that produce our annual food and I'm slowly shifting those over to perennials and exploring uh, which of the perennial vegetables we actually really like because one of the things we've learnt uh, probably the hard way here is it's great to grow things but actually if you don't eat them uh, then there's no point in growing them. We brought a lot of raspberry plants here with us and I didn't really understand uh, just how much they would like this environment and they would grow so well. So now not only do we have uh, plenty of raspberries to preserve and to eat. Uh, I'm making raspberry wine, raspberry syrup. We give raspberries to friends. Uh, we have a raspberry glut. If we had a pound for every time someone said to us we were living the dream or well, we could retire by now, well no not quite but you know we'd certainly have a nice little nest egg. One of the nice things we've been able to do is to, to document our not so much journey as just our experience as we've gone from nine to five managers to being almost self-sufficient in, in our fruit and vegetables and some of our uh, some of our meat and it's been it's been a really good learning experience and it's been a really thoughtful process for me I've managed to uh, swap computers and admin for soil and plants once we knew we were moving here, uh, I started keeping a journal in the form of a blog. And I wrote, not quite daily, but almost, about what we were doing, but also how we felt about what we were doing and how, uh, how the changes that we were making here were having an impact on us as people. After about a year, uh, I created a YouTube channel. And since then, I've been sharing uh, my trials and tribulations and experiments and celebrating all the things I've got right and trying to learn from the mistakes I've made along the way. And one of the things I quite encourage is for things to uh, self-sow uh, and for volunteer plants to appear so very much. I like this potato here that's growing uh, out of the, the bottom of the compost heap. I'll let that grow for this year and harvest it in a few weeks time. So we didn't expect to be living the dream and the more I've thought about it, the more I've wondered how it is that we create that dream. And I think there are probably two ways that you can do that. 
and one of those is to do what we've done and, and build it from the soil upwards and adapt and change and create the thing that feels comfortable and feels right and the other way is to have a look at what you do now and actually look at it with a fresh pair of eyes but it could be it could be that whatever you're doing now actually already is your dream so when the decision was made for me to stay here uh, and create <laughs> something here uh, my income had disappeared and uh, Mr J chose to work part time because we value uh, our time together more than cold hard cash but it means that our resources are really limited and one of the things I needed to do was find ways of doing everything I wanted to do here without it costing a huge amount of money. And I became friends with a local tree surgeon and I talked to him about was there any potential for having any wood chips and really kindly he now delivers wood chips to us by the lorry load on a regular basis. So I've been able to create pathways right across all around the vegetable gardens and all our walkways are covered with a good deep layer of wood chips which over time then break down and I can use that to pick up uh, and put into the vegetable beds and the raised beds to improve the soil structure and replace that uh, with new wood chips and so the process is just repeated. Right across the garden uh, I grow sacrifice plants, uh, like brassicas uh, and other things because I grow all of our cabbages, brassicas under netting which means butterflies and moths can't get at them but I still want to be able to support their population so I grow uh, things like cabbages and kales out in the open to actively encourage uh, our local wildlife to have a home. I really like this time of year, late summer, early autumn, when all the plants are just heaving with fruit and veg and there's sort of heavy stillness to the air with a kind of almost a sense of preparation for shutting down for the, for the rest of the year but it's not quite there yet it's almost like a pause in time and that's the time when I really start harvesting everything filling the freezers masses of preserving and there's also a sense of yeah we did good this year so while I was creating the vegetable garden uh, I used um, a mixture of techniques and knowledge and the more that I learnt the more I introduced into my growing methods so I use a mix of uh, raised beds uh, with uh, no dig and organic methods and I work quite a lot within permaculture principles and the more I've learnt, the more I've been able to implement, but uh, retrofitting some of those is not as easy uh, as it could be. So I've had to adapt and learn. And that's one of the really nice things about having the time to be able to implement new ideas and experiment and see if they work. I've wanted to grow asparagus uh, for many years. And when we moved here, I wanted... Uh, a small asparagus patch um, as it is we've got two asparagus beds and these are now in their second year here and I'm really beginning to see uh, just how much asparagus we'll be able to eat uh, in future years and if they don't then I have a chance to adjust the what I'm doing a little bit and try that and I seem to have found quite a nice rhythm in this garden now so the annual vegetable garden that's also got perennials in it <laughs> is pretty well settled into a, a pattern and rhythm and now I'm exploring uh, using a market gardening technique with long straight rows not in raised beds and I've been able to do that because the chickens have been working that land for three years and they've really improved the soil and so it gives me a chance to try new techniques and new ideas and see how those do. 
So having the chickens here means that uh, we're not just producing uh, our own fruit and veg. Um, we also have eggs uh, and meat as well. So we've got uh, a flock of chickens uh, and we have two flocks of ducks uh, and we have turkeys as well. And we've tried uh, some other birds uh, like guinea fowl um, that were just too loud and a little bit too nuts uh, for the way we live. Uh, but it does mean that we are producing just more of our food than just our fruit and veg. Uh, it has reduced our need to go to the shop even more. Over the last year, uh, I've developed uh, the flower beds in the centre uh, of our homestead here, partly because I just wanted something pretty uh, rather than every area uh, looking utilitarian and partly to encourage pollinators and good grief it has really worked. Uh, the number of butterflies and hoverflies, lacewings, uh, bees here uh, has increased noticeably uh, since we put all these flowers in. We spent a lot of time sitting around having cups of tea and chatting and I think uh, it's probably the impression that that's what this life is about. It's about a little bit out in the garden and a lot of relaxing and it's just not like that. It's really hard work, physical hard work, but there's come a point where that physical hard work, the, the <laughs> being hot and sweaty or uh, rained on and squelching around in muddy boots, actually stops being work and starts just becoming part of life and there is a, just a sense of satisfaction from that that I never had when I was working with an employer. There's just that feeling that everything we do is for the good of our family and that, that feels nice.